this chapter, it also covers the fact that we can use um, the optimization techniques we saw back in chapter five to these nice, to the well-behaved versions of, um, of these iso-quant, iso-cost problems, these cost minimization problems. Can use optimization techniques um, from chapter five. minimization problems from this chapter. Remember with no uh, kinky preferences. solutions. Then we can easily rewrite our minimization problem subject to f of x1, x2 equals y. And so here we have, um, you know, this is the minimization where we have you know, those long runs. We have both, both inputs we can change. But we can come up. So one of the methods we, we've learned about is this Lagrangian method. W1, x1 plus W2, x2 um, minus lambda. Remember that Lagrangian multiplier f of x1, x2, minus y. And now we have our first order conditions. There's three first order conditions. Take the derivative of Lagrangian with respect to x1, which is just equal to w1 minus lambda times the, the derivative of our production function, the partial derivative of the production function with respect to x1. And that equals zero. We have our second one, which is the derivative of Lagrangian function with respect to x1. Sorry, with respect to x2, I should say, which is y, uh, w2 minus lambda times the derivative of the partial, I should say, of our production function with respect to input 2, the amount of input 2, and that equals 0. And then our third one, which is just the derivative of our Lagrangian with respect to lambda, which is just our, our constraint here. And we can say minus y equals 0. True with respect to lambda is just everything in the brackets, and in the first order condition we got zero. So again, three equations, three unknowns. If we take one over two here, we're going to get exactly what our um, what our tangency condition was. In, you know, when we, when we looked at like the slope of the iso quant versus the slope of the uh, iso cost line, because when we took the ratio of, of 1 and 2, the lambdas will cancel out. Remember, this is just the marginal product of, of input 1, this is just the marginal product of input 2. So we're going to get w1 over w2 is equal to the marginal product, I'm supposed to say p of um, good one over the marginal product of input two. Same as before, 
potentially could solve this with respect to, you know, we have an actual production function, we solve x1 as a, or x2 as a function of, of the input prices and the other good, and we can plug that back into to our third constraint here, our third, sorry, our third first order condition, our constraint here, and we can solve for the actual level of x1 star and, and plug it back in and get x2 star. So that's kind of a method for solving these problems. 